Hey guys, and welcome to another of Fort's Advanced C++ Tutorials. Last time we got started on setting up a class that can ha support virtual functions, and then being able to make uh, children of that class, or classes derived from that base, uh, uh, bound to Lua. And, um, no, there's not exactly a way to bind this class directly to Lua, but this will basically be able to make um, this type here, this Lua type that we're making, will will basically be, behave as the base for all of the different behaviors that Lua might want. Because we're not setting up to have one behavior, uh, we're just setting the C++ version up to be able to handle any behavior Lua wants to use. So Lua can have three different versions, uh, three different instances of Lua type that each behave different ways. Um, so Lua will be able to have uh, different versions of Lua type behaving differently which is what we want po from polymorphism. Now, last time we set up um, three main things here. We set up a system for pairing the pointer or the light user data of an object with the table that all of its information is going to be stored in for Lua. All of its Lua information stored in the table is paired up with this pointer. Now we can um, use that pairing up to, to to define this function, which is defining the virtual version of the function from the base. We are defining this function, which was previously abstract, um, as a function which will simply go to the registry, look up what table is paired up with this object, get the function out of that table, and then call that function. Okay, And then finally, we are um, making a function here that allows us to make uh, no, not the pairing between the um, the pointer and the table, but between the variable name and the function object, which is getting used up here to once the table's been accessed to access the function from that table. And this is important because sometimes we'll have classes with two or more virtual functions, and we want to be able to get them all paired once inside the registry. We can only make one pair with this pointer in the registry. So we pair this pointer up with a table, and that table will have to contain everything defining how this object should behave. So one of the things inside this table, in this case the only thing that's tied to the table, but sometimes other things are there too, but the only thing inside this table is the function func, which will get called whenever this gets called. Now we can set that. Uh, because it's a light user data, it'll automatically be freed, um, because we, I mean, because it's a full user data. So, um, let's take a look at what happens when we uh, run this system now. We're going to bind the uh, Lua functions, um, Lua register, and by bind I mean register. Um, I use that term interchangeably. The whole, this whole process is binding, um, and the registering is the final thing you do to finish the bind. So, the name will be uh, new Lua type and Lua new Lua type will be the function. And again, we'll register um, set func, Lua set func. All right. So we have, um, we have our two functions registered. Um, but to make this useful, we also need some C++ code. This is both a Lua and a C++ thing, kind of split down the middle now. Um, so what we need is, after we've uh, executed the script, we're actually going to do more stuff. What would we do? Well, we're going to use the, um, the uh, Lua to set up the Lua types, right, the Lua objects, and then C will go on and do its thing, and sometimes it's going to refer back to whatever was set up in this. So uh, maybe what happens is um, uh, da, 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 there will be, here we go, we're going to make a list static list um, of base type pointers called tasks and then we're going to add to the constructor of base type that whenever it gets constructed should automatically add um, 
to the back of the list a pointer to itself. Um, and then hopefully they never get destroyed. I'm not showing you how to handle destruction yet, so we'll have to hope they don't get destroyed in this example. Um, which they won't be. We don't have to hope. We can we can guarantee they won't. Um, do do do. We've got the uh, the base type, the list. All oh, right. So then what we'll do is we'll just start doing while true um, tasks dot uh, for auto it equals um, base type tasks dot begin it does not equal base type tasks dot end increment the iterator and then of course call the virtual function um, then it'll call that virtual function right here which will be connected to um, this and it doesn't really, of course right here it doesn't really care that it's connected to that because uh, it's a virtual function, that's the idea. So this could be, there could be several different C++ uh, classes that don't even rely on Lua. They get executed here, and then once in a while, it hits one that is actually a Lua type. And then if it hits the one that's a Lua type, it will ask the uh, the Lua um, table that it's paired up with what it should do. And the Lua table will take it from there. And, um... Uh, that Lua table stuff got initialized right here in this in this script here. So um, let's say we uh, we got, we're gonna clear this stuff out. Um, oh, I hope I ah, I lost some of the. Uh, just realized I've lost some of the codes. I've been trying to save up um, the uh, mains, and I am missing a few now because I didn't save one for five or six. But um, let's go ahead and execute this. Uh, or not execute this, but set this up. We have two functions to deal with today: uh, new type and set func. So we're gonna make um, we're gonna make several new types. Let's make our first one: new type, and then we can do or no Lua type set func of a to uh, this. So when a gets executed, it's going to print um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see it's gonna print uh, it'll just print a it'll just say here's the a object let's make a B now B is going to be there set funk a function maybe this one will print um, some x value and then increment x. Um, let's make a C. New Lua type set. Oops, I set A again. Should be B. Set func of C to um, maybe C will do. Um, if x equals let's make a n equals zero equals n times n then then print x n equals n plus one and let's see what that does it's interesting I think um, we're going to compile the C++ code. Hopefully we get no errors. Ah, uh, we did. Let's see what we got. Probably just the list action, now that I think about it. Um, uh, external symbol. Yeah, that's what it is. STD. List. The weird thing is, if you ever have a... Um, static variables you have to like define them like this which I always just find weird like I guess yeah I guess it has no way of knowing if it's inlined or not and 
it does like it's basically like an X turn variable when it's outside of a class. So okay, I guess it makes sense. What are we gonna get? Nothing. Interesting. I'm gonna pause it until I get this working now. So um, I tracked it down. Um, the issue was this: I forgot to call the constructor on the uh, the uh, new Lua type. So after I um, allocated it, the constructor now gets called, and the consequence of that is, well, first of all, it doesn't know what its state is, and more importantly, never gets this construct the base constructor called, which adds it to the tasks. So that's why it's a um, pretty good habit to get into to. Um, always call this constructor and it was silly that I forgot this time but anyway um, the constructor is called and it works now so it's I've recompiled it and we can take a run I also added um before I actually do run now that you've already seen it it doesn't matter a whole lot but I've also added a regular type that uh, is defined in C++ that just prints out no problem with regular type and a new line and then that means we've got these three types defined in Lua, and the, also the type right here defined in C++ in the list. So give it a run. It starts filling up, spamming with uh, messages. We've got messages counting up numbers. Let's see if we can find one of those squares that I was looking for. Right there. See, 255, 256. I think, I think that's one of them. Man, it goes up fast. Let's see if we can find one around 1,000. Ah, I missed it. There wouldn't be one anyway, would there? Alright, stop. Run again. Let's see. 100, there's one. Um, yeah, this is fun. Anyway, there you got the idea. We can uh, we can mix um, a bunch of different behaviors of a certain... Uh, so the, the idea here, the best way to put this is the idea here is we've got one type of Lua object now, which is being created by this new Lua type. But it, each version of this type can have a different behavior simply by giving it a different function to set func. Now, there's actually other ways we can do this other than having a set func function. And the set func method um, can sometimes be pretty tedious, if you're, especially if you're not going to define... Like, that's a good method for if you're not defining each version, but if you have to define every function, say there's 10 functions and you're going to need all 10 defined for every object, this method is kind of tedious. Um, some better ways of doing it would be to have um, use some advanced Lua trickery and have some uh, default values passed and then, uh, or not passed, but like stored in a table, use a meta table, do some lookup tricks, and we can make it so that um, they're automatically defined, but that would require us to change the way we uh, operate on that. We could also, to add a lot more flexibility, add a function that just um, gets the table, like we've been doing, using the pointer and the register to get the table, and then return the table from that function. That wouldn't be too hard to make. And then the user could manually edit that table, and then you could even go so far as to have um, uh, other parts of the Lua scripts might be depending on the fact that once it gets this object, because of the type um, of operation of fun or function that's being done on it, the variable stored in that in this version of the object could be different than the variable stored in this version, and so we get even further separation between these multiple definitions of the Lua type, which is supposed to be in a polymorphic base, and so that's what we've recreated, which is very useful, and it's something that um, my own personal Shaping's Tale engine, that game I'm making. Um, it bit uses a lot all the time. Um, it, our uh, tricks like this, like I've got, um, what's a good example? The networking objects, for example. Um, every every object that's going to be networked has to make a networking object, and that gives that comes with like eight virtual functions that have to be defined. So each object in um, the game 
is uh, some version of one of those objects, basically. Um, so they're all the same networking object in C++, but in Lua, depending on when they were created and the values that were given to their functions, they could behave very differently. So um, we've got um, we've got most of these good basics down now. We're going to stop lurking so much at uh, the, um, the things we've been looking at. We're going to tie up some loose ends now. We're going to look at the compiler, like I said, next. And um, I have a feeling there's some other things that I want to talk about after the compiler, but we'll see. And uh, if I do come up with those things, we'll obviously have those tutorials. And then after that, um, like I said at the beginning of this series, we'll be branching off into pure Lua tutorials so we can finally get into more advanced Lua. And once we get into more advanced Lua, we can come back and the Lua tutorials will look at more on the hybrid stuff. But we're also going to branch from the hybrid and keep up a C++ tutorial series. So I'm going to try to get more videos out than I used to. Uh, and get to, you know, with the two different languages, we'll be able to cover more ground in the same amount of time, I'm hoping. Uh, I just don't want to make twice as many C++ tutorials to do that. So also, the Lua scripting is a lot of fun for me. Now, um... Oh. So anyway, um... That's the main stuff. Like I said, I'll try to get most of the source out if I can get all of it. Uh, most of it is saved, and this file will be saved. Um, and we'll be moving on to something completely different for the next video. Uh, see you next time.